Hello and welcome to Just Board, the show about computers, microcontrollers, and more. Today we'll take a look at the Latte Panda. The Latte Panda is a single board computer that runs an Intel Cherry Trail CPU. This is a 64-bit quad-core processor that clocks in at about 1.44 gigahertz with burst speeds of up to 1.8 gigahertz. And unlike most single board computers, this is an Intel x86 architecture instead of ARM. For graphics, the board packs a 500 megahertz Intel HD GPU. On top of all of that, the Latte Panda also contains a 16 MHz at Mega 32U4, which is basically like having an Arduino built in. This allows for running real-time code outside of the main processor without having an extra board taking up space. For memory, you have the option between 4 and 2 GB of DDR3L SD RAM. And for storage, you have the option between 32 and 64 GB of onboard eMMC storage. The board also contains three USB ports. Two are USB 2.0, and the third one is USB 3.0. There's also a micro SD card reader. For networking, the board has a gigabit Ethernet port. Yay! As well as built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It even comes with this little antenna that you can attach. Media options include an HDMI port, a 3.5 millimeter combined audio and headphone jack, a DSi display connector, and a touch panel connector. There are also four onboard LEDs. The red one on the bottom is a power indicator. The two blue ones here are RX and TX indicators for the App Mega. And this blue one is user programmable from pin 13 of the App Mega. There are three buttons on the board. Two of them are power and reset. And this third one is a reset just for the App Mega. Finally, to power the board, you can either use this micro USB port or you can supply a regulated five volts to one of these pins. As always, be careful when supplying power this way and make sure your supply is stable or you can cause damage to the board. As far as expansion options go, there are four main headers on the board. This one is an ICSP, or in-circuit serial programming interface, to the App Mega chip. This is for situations where you want to program the App Mega externally, instead of using the default and much easier to use Arduino IDE, which is included with the software. This header is for the Intel chip, and it contains three I2C interfaces, one UART interface, a 1.8 volt pin, and a ground pin. Be aware that these these pins all operate at 1.8 volts instead of the 5 volts used elsewhere on the board. The next header is for the App Mega. It provides two 5 volt pins and two ground pins. 12 pins are capable of analog input. 7 pins are capable of hardware pulse width modulation. And all 20 of these can be used as digital I.O. Finally, the last header provides a subset of the pins from the previous App Mega header, but in a more convenient form, since each one is paired with a 5 volt and ground pin, and they're just more accessible on the board. Three of these are capable of doing analog input, three are capable of hardware pulse width modulation, and all six of them can be used as generic digital I.O. So what's it for? What really makes this board shine is the fact that it's capable of running a complete Windows 10 operating system. It runs so well that I've actually used it as a backup computer while my laptop was out of service. And I only have the two gigabytes version, so my bet is that the four gigabyte one is even more stable. And I don't just mean minimal usage like notepad and web Web browsing either. Here it is running Minecraft. That's the full edition of Minecraft with all of the default settings, not a minimal custom one like the Raspberry Pi comes with. And since it's an x86 board, there are applications that run on it that you just can't get to run on an ARM board, like Steam. And since it has a full gigabit network, that means it's great for streaming Steam games from other devices. So anywhere you need a lightweight Windows machine or a media device, the Latte Panda is probably a good fit. What isn't it for? Well, it isn't cheap. The most basic board with two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage is listed for about $90. And that's before adding on a Windows license or any other peripherals. So this isn't a board that you would embed into a bunch of low cost gadgets. If you don't need Windows or you don't need the amount of power this board offers, there are much more cost effective boards out there. And despite the fact that it has an Arduino built into the board, it's no more integrated into the design than just having an Arduino attached via USB. USB. It's mostly just space saving and a way for them to put some GPIO pins on the board. But in terms of being a tiny Windows machine with a good amount of power behind it, the Latte Panda is a really solid option. Well, that's the Latte Panda. To see a demo of this board in action, click through to the video on the left. And don't forget to go down to the comments below and let me know what board you'd like to see covered next.